Hi, welcome to three tips in three minutes. Today we're going to look at using Google Advanced Search to discover publicly available primary source collections on the internet. Our tips for this episode are really going to be more like steps. So step one is to find Google Advanced Search. It's become a bit less obvious than it once was. The easiest thing to do is to just type in a search for anything on the main Google page to get some results up. Then click on the gray gear-shaped icon, icon on the right side of the screen and choose Advanced Search. Go ahead and delete the keywords from your original search just so they won't interfere with your real search. Step two is to go ahead and set up your search. In the first box labeled All These Words, you want to enter the most important keywords to describe your research question or topic. Do not enter complete questions or sentences. This should be essential words and short phrases only. Also, it's fine to start by describing a very narrow or specific topic, but you may not find the results you need, so be prepared to back up a little and search for a slightly broader concept related to your topic. Now for this example, let's say that I'm interested in finding sources about women and the Civil War. So I'm going to put in women and the phrase Civil War in quotation marks. In the third box labeled any of these words, enter a string of phrases to describe the fact that you're looking for digital collections. Put each phrase inside quotation marks. Try phrases like digital library, digital collection, digital exhibit, digital archive, online collection, online exhibit, and virtual library. Now scroll down to the box labeled site or domain. Enter .edu to start with. This will limit your search to web pages that are hosted by educational institutions like universities, which means you will be more likely to find a high quality source. Please keep in mind, however, that this .edu domain is not a 100% guarantee of quality. At many universities, Every faculty member and every student gets a personal web space. Google may find a page in one of these personal spaces, and depending on who put it up, it may not carry the same authority as a page officially posted by, for instance, the university library. After, tr after seeing the results of the .edu search, you may also want to try .gov, which finds governmental web pages, and as a last resort, .org which is supposed to be nonprofit organizations, but is a lot more vague and less strictly maintained than edu and gov. However, you will need to try each of these different domains in a separate search. Step three is to go ahead and click the advanced search button to execute your search and then begin examining your results. Browse for a title and a brief description seems potentially promising. And then open each site and evaluate what it is. Can you tell who put it up, for instance, the library versus a student? And does that source seem authoritative and trustworthy? What kind of content does the collection contain? Books, letters, photographs, etc. Start digging into the sources to see how well they might support your topic. Or bookmark the site to complete this step later. If you get stumped trying to find online primary source collections, the History Librarian has already listed hundreds of them for you in the library's online research guides. Look for the two guides. So let's see, History US. Look for the two guides called US History Primary Source Collections Online. And then under World History, World History Primary Source Collections Online. And when in doubt, just contact your history librarian for help. This has been three tips in three minutes. Hope to see you next time.